And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, with us today we have special guest, Z Garcia. Oh, thank you. How you doing? <laughs> today we're taking a look at Shadowrun, which I'm going to be open here. I've never played the RPG Shadowrun. Did you? Nor have I. Was there a Shadowrun card game, I think, at one point? I believe so. There was a CCG based in the Shadowrun universe, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't play that one either. Um, so that way you kind of know where I'm, where I'm coming from. So I don't know much about this universe. They, they were explaining it to me. There was a magic apocalypse or something. Right, where normal people acquired magical powers or were mutated from said apocalypse. That's the general genesis of Think of, of this theme. as your typical, not typical, but it's your, your magic mix with technology yes. universe. Yes. But this is a deck building game. And it, that gets me excited. And it's cooperative, which gets Z excited. Me very excited. So let's take a look at how it plays, and we'll be back. The first thing you'll do is you're going to pick a mission. The game comes with several missions that you can play, so like I might pick extraction. It tells you what to do for the mission, how the mission works. This looks very complicated, but it's basically just telling you how to do things. It's not that complicated. Each player in the game is going to pick one of the different characters. These characters are fairly similar. You give them your own name. Here's a track to keep of karma, which is essentially victory points. And then it tells you their race, and this gives you a couple things. First, it tells you their maximum starting health, which is seven here. You keep track of your health, how many cards they start with, and how much Nuyen, or money, you start with. Okay, so you start with seven health, three cards and two money, four, four, and four, six, five, and one, um, and five, four, and three. So there's different combinations. You will also pick one diff one role. So each character in the game will pick a role. There's magic, a mage role, street samurai, backer role, and the uh, the face role. Let's say I pick this the street samurai role. That means my starting deck, as shown here at the top of the card, is going to be four quick shots, a mask, a mana, and a street smarts. That's my starting deck. Now that all the starting decks are similar, the, the just that they all have four of one card and then the other three. There's these four basic cards. So you'll shuffle these cards and you will draw four of them. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you'll draw whatever your, your uh, character card tells you to draw of them. There's also going to be some cards placed in the middle. These are cards that you can buy. You'll be able to buy these and add these to your hand to use. The cost of each card is in the top right corner. So you can see this whip costs two. The sniper rifle here costs four. Negotiation costs three. Wild lightning bolt here costs six New Yen. Now, what you're going to do on your turn is you will often be dealing with obstacles. Different missions will have different things happen, but you're usually going to be dealing with obstacles. But before all four players go, and let's say it's a four-player game or however many players are in the game, before the players go, you will always draw an event. And different events will have different things happen to them. So, for example, here in this We Gotta Slow Them Down event, you can see here that it shows an infinity symbol, which says the attack strength of each undamaged obstacle is doubled. So anyone who doesn't have any damage to them, enemy obstacles or enemies, will be doubled. Then it shows 5 plus. It says, in addition, each obstacle heals one level. This will only happen if five of these um, event cards have already been drawn. So that's what that means. So as the game gets, as you take longer and longer to finish the mission, these event cards will get nastier and nastier. Like this one here, Just Survive, has a bunch of things happen, and then has one more thing happen if six other cards have come out. So for a while, these event cards will do some harm to you, but as time goes by, it can get worse and worse. 
Now these obstacle cards, there are two types of obstacle cards in the game. There are level one obstacle cards and level two, and the scenario will tell you which one will be placed in front of you. Usually each player will have one placed in front of them, but you might be facing uh, different types of obstacles. In fact, there's a giant dragon obstacle that you have to face as the end result of one of the missions. Uh, you can be fighting an enraged dragon, which is just a gigantic thing. But each of these obstacles, you'll put a little damage marker here at the top of them to show as you give them damage. To do damage to them, you have to basically blow through all their levels. So this guy, you need to do one damage to him, and then two damage, then three, then specifically one magic damage, then one damage, then one magic damage. The guy underneath him, the Ares field representative, you need to do four, four, then uh, a face damage and a face damage. Now, when you do the combination damages, they can be any combo. So if I want to do one level to the Ares field rep, I can discard a quick shot of Mark of Mana and the Street Smarts because they all do one damage. I could also discard this Retrieval Agent card, which will do two damage, one green damage and then one colorless damage. But when you get to certain levels on here, they, you have to use specific uh, types of damage. And you have to use that, you have to do these in order. If you don't defeat an obstacle that's in front of you at the end of their turn, the obstacle will do damage to you. And that's how much damage he does to you. If the obstacle knocks you all the way down to zero damage, you are not dead. You are just basically uh, staggered, and then one more hit will kill you, which will lose the game for the good guys. Now, after you've done that, you will draw two cards if you have three or less in your hand. You don't have to discard every card in your hand. Then you can buy other cards, like I said, from here. And as soon as you buy a card, they are um, replaced. But you can see how good these cards are. Not only do they do damage, but like, for example, here, this one, the damage that the sniper rifle does is it does two levels, whatever those levels are, as long as they're the last two levels. Um, the whip, you can take an obstacle facing someone else to come face you, pull an enemy towards you. The negotiation here, when you buy a skill card, you pay one less for each skill card um, that, if, that you've played this turn. But it also has an assist on it. That assist means you can play this card during someone else's turn and then you will get the assist. A good example of assist is down here, this covering fire. You choose another runner, that runner heals one hit point. However, you can play it on someone else's turn to pick another someone else's obstacle. It can't attack that turn and takes one of the black damage. So there's some really cool things you can pull off and you can really get a lot of damage from these things. Um, you can't buy this from the black market unless you pay a spell, but once you get the lightning bolt in your deck, it does two consecutive levels of damage, period, which is a really cool damage that you can do. But as you can see, the obstacles often take many levels to beat. And I mean, uh, let me just quick show you several of the different obstacles. So you can see different obstacles. Uh, here's some of the level one obstacles. So we have a, a bone laced adept and here's a buzz back. And when this guy's in front of you, he's not hard to beat, but you can't draw cards, which can be very problematic. An ancient century, uh, an Aslan Decker. I don't even know what all these people are or do, but they all have different combinations of things that it takes to kill them, but they also have different special abilities. And here we have some of the higher guys now. The, and I'm not even trying to pronounce the Lone Star Lieutenant. And they have, uh, here, runners can't buy cards. This is everybody. So one of the cool things about this game is you are not only allowed to fight the runner, in, the obstacle in front of you, but you can fight the obstacle in front of someone else. So this will continue on. Sometimes there's different things that happen between missions, um, different phases, and you can heal between those or whatever might happen. And if you accomplish whatever the goal is, and for an extraction, for example, you need to get, everyone's going to get an obstacle and you need to defeat them three times and you win, um, but you can lose by just one person dying. Once you have one, you will get a certain number of karma and you can take even more karma if you make the mission harder. Once you get karma, you can spend it. As I said, Karma is essentially experience points. And then you have a whole pile here of different sticker sheets. And there, I mean, there's a ton of stickers. So let's say I get five karma and I say, oh, I want cigar money. This increases your starting Nuyen by one. So I pay my five karma virtually and I take this sticker off and then I will place it onto my human like this. And now every time I use this guy in the future, he, instead of being a five, four, three, he is a 544. Four. 
But that's just the, the five levels. I mean, you can get to some really cool special abilities as you buy, like for example, the Red Haze here, which costs 40 karma. Every time you would heal, you can draw a card instead, or show off. Whenever you draw cards during your draw and buy step, draw one extra card, then discard one. Or Prime Runner, the first basic card you play in your turn that matches your roll color, deals two damage instead of one. These are special, and so you can have these abilities, add them up, and you can even replace ones that you've gotten. So there's a lot of different things that you can add, and and customize your people. Okay, the first thing I would like to address, <laughs> because I know some people out there have already said they're not gonna buy the game based on this, and that's the uh, stickers. Stickers on my game? Defacing this gorgeous monument? How dare you? Okay, well here's the deal. After each mission you get a certain number of karma and you can spend that to get these stickers. Mm -hmm. You need to beat a lot of, okay, if you win two missions you get your first sticker. Okay. Right. Then you need to beat like six more missions right. to get a second sticker. Then you need to beat a whole pile more. I mean, it's it takes a, a while. Slow progression, definitely. So, and you also get two characters of each type, and they sell this expansion pack, which comes with four more characters of each type and more stickers. So, and you don't actually even need to put the stickers down. I guess if it really bothered you that much, you could just really say, "I have this you one." Then, right. Note which ones you've acquired. But I'm telling you, to completely fill up your guy with stickers would probably take 50 games. And if you're... Right. I would imagine that almost every person out there who complains about the sticker thing wouldn't even play this 50 times. they probably play it five times, move on to the next game. Right, that's the, th the thing is, I get it, you are technically changing the game, that's true. But once you've played it 50 times... Man, you've, you've paid, like, pennies on the play, you know, at that point. And you can still play it. It's not like the game got destroyed. Right. Just, and you can even change. There are so many stickers in this game. Mm -hmm. You can change the stickers and play a new way. Uh, in fact, I'm at the... Don't tell the Catalyst guys this. Since I'm not in the mood to play this 50 times right. to get... I don't want to wait to get to the good stuff. I'm, I'm a Yankee. I'm impatient. And so, slap some stickers on there now. Right. But I mean, you could say that. You have 40 karma, I have 40 karma. Let's put these on here. And then let's play a hard mission. Right. And I think that's right. reasonable. Okay, so that's a sticker. You should definitely learn the game I would recommend before you do that. But hey, you want to get to the cool, funky powers and, and cool stickers now? Yeah, why not? All right, well, let's talk about the gameplay itself. Okay. What'd you think? I like the gameplay a lot. I, you know, I, I looked at the cover, I, I looked at everything coming out of the box. First time we played, and I thought, ah, this looks like a bunch of stuff going on. This is going to be one of those heady co-op games. It's not at all. This it is does, a clean design. You I know? agree. It looks it looks way more confusing when you first open it. it you really, see all these symbols, you're like, oh. Yeah, I'm going to be, this is going to be a beast to learn. And it's not. It's great. It's got good cooperation, which, uh, you know, thumbs up. Some games are co-op, but don't really bring that. And it's a clean turn. You know, the turns are easy to manage. You feel like you're making progress. You're fighting. I, I think it's a good, good design. I was, I mean, I was surprised. But I was not expecting a good game. Part of that is the theme. <laughs> Part of that is I had not heard anything about it. So I went into it with very low expectations. And I came away impressed. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the same thing there. I, I thought... That this game, I wasn't. I didn't think it would be bad. I just went into it looking and thought, oh, that's gonna be very complicated. It's gonna be very skewed towards the role playing end. Right. Then when we played it, I thought, oh man, I hope that they didn't um, take all the theme out because it, it's very easy. I can say I need a red, I need a green. But the mm -hmm. equipment really brought that theme in. The sniper rifle feels like a sniper rifle. Did right. you think so? Yeah, absolutely. You know, take just... that last shot, take the person out. Everything has a nice thematic tie, and yeah. It, for it to be quick, there is some of that leeway where it's like, oh, it's green or red, like you said. But I think the characters are very neat. You start to develop an attachment to whoever you're playing. So, yes, it, it does even lend itself to a little bit of that role-playing in a subtle way. But, yeah, absolutely. The cards are cool. You got the, like, the funky electric whip and the the sniper rifle and all this other cool stuff and every time a new car comes out everybody looks at it and you go oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i want that oh you know that's great in a game that's what you want 
And you said earlier, the cooperative aspect, I like the fact that you, I really felt like I was working together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to help you out because I could do my own thing here, but you're going to die. Right. If I don't come over and help you, and if you die, and I like any game that does this, when one person dies, the game's over. Right. That's a good way to play the game, so that there's no. I mean, so I got to keep Z alive, mm -hmm. and so well, I, I got to keep that. you alive mostly. But I, get, <laughs> I get what you're saying. Um, and so it's it's neat. The the difference between the rolls, the face, the decker, essentially is just a different starting deck. Sure. And it's not like they're they don't feel that different, but because you start a certain way. As the game progresses, mm -hmm. you start, you know, you keep taking cards. A lot of the magic cards, especially, piggyback off each other. Mm -hmm. The more in your deck, the more magic. So that's kind of cool. You have that roll. And then the starting stats, they are what they are. I think it just, again, helps you define the character you're playing, which I like that. You know, you can take any character and then be the decker, you know, with that character. And it just helps to form who you're playing within this world. You know, I know I sound like I'm talking about a role-playing game, and it's not, but it lets itself well to, to telling a good story. Okay, so a couple comparisons. If you like the Shadowrun RPG game, this is obviously going to be simpler than that. But I think if you like the RPG, this game allows you to go from beginning to end. You can have a good long story, and you will enjoy that. Um, I think that if you are a deck builder fan, this game is going to be a little bit more complicated than games like Ascension. Right. Um, and maybe it's even a little bit more complicated than Dominion, but it's not overly complex. And if you just like cooperative games, I think this, again, this is kind of in the middle of the road. It looks complex, but it isn't really that bad. Agreed, yeah. Robinson Crusoe is more complex. Way more complex. Eat Yourself even is maybe a little bit more complex. So the decisions, you, your decisions are fairly simple, but... They're fun, and you're constantly talking to each other. Yes. Hey, what did we do? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, what did you buy? You know, how does that? How can we help each other? And I like any game that lets you buy a card and then use it. Right, the you next buy turn. the card right into uh, your hand. Yes. You don't have to wait. And in fact, deck building in this is almost a secondary thing. Because yeah, you yeah. get the cards in your hand right away, it's more of how do I use the cards I have now rather than... I'm buying cards. I think I might get that in the future. It's right, more it's not, like I want to do it now. It's overwhelming. I, I, I would say of all the things you described, I agree with all of them. And I would say the main thing that comes to the forefront is the cooperation in the game. I think that's, that's right there from turn one. And it does make everyone engage. How hard? Is it hard? It's pretty hard, yeah. And obviously it will get easier when you get more and more of the, the upgrades, mm -hmm. but then you can play the harder missions, which bring that hard level back. And I like how each mission you can make it harder if you want. Right, right. You can choose to make it harder for the reward, yeah. I think it's not impossible hard, though. It's just got that good, mm, I want to try that again, and kick that guy's face. It's that good level hard, which is perfect. I recommend this for most people. Not, I mean, some people don't like this universe. And I think if you don't like this universe... Probably you shouldn't get this because the right. theme is pretty strong, and I don't think you can say, "Well, I'm just going to ignore that and play the, the me mechanisms." Agreed. I guess you if want, I guess if everyone be... at the table did that, you could pull it off. Sure, but you want to be invested in the theme in this game. So if it really turns you off, then yeah, avoid it. I would say, but if the idea at all, I mean, you don't have to be familiar with Shadowrun. I'm not. You're barely familiar with it. I think if even the idea, the magic and technology coming together. I love that idea. If even that does it, then yeah, you'll get into it. But it might even work backwards for me. Because if someone said, hey, we're going to do a one-off RPG in the Shadowrun universe, I might say, eh, maybe I'll check that out now. Right, right. Either way, I think it's a solid offering from uh, Catalyst. So thumbs up for me. Me too. Great game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.